Welcome back to the VHS Vault. I am VHS Jason. Next to me is Jason Roy Gaston. And Hello. And and just when you thought we were done with this franchise. It pulled us back in. Once more time. <laughs> and of course, if you haven't, I assume you clicked on the thumbnail knowing exactly what we're talking about. A Nightmare on Elm Street 2010 version. It's a weird title to say, isn't it? It's Yes. They did. Yeah, they could have just called it Nightmare on Elm Street without the A, and it would have been different. But no, it's just a Nightmare on Elm Street, 2010, which is not the yes. title. That's just what I'm calling it, or you now know, this... um, Rorschach, Freddy, whatever we want to call it. <laughs> now this was produced in the time where Platinum Dunes, I believe, had uh, ownership over the franchise because we had just done uh, Friday the Thirteenth, 2009, and in the same production company pumps this sucker out. A year later. Yes. yes. Now the build up for this was I, I remember at the time uh going being pretty well like not a fan immediately that they were even rebooting the franchise. Thinking that Robert England wouldn't be involved was enough for me to kind of dismiss this offhand. And I felt validated by that once I saw the trailer. Yes. Because um, um, it's one of the worst trailers. If you, if you haven't watched the trailer, it's one of the worst trailers ever made. It's If a job of a trailer is to get you into the cinema, this thing fails on an epic scale. Um, and then, yeah, I did not see this at the cinema, Jason. I didn't really see it for a long time, for a long, long time. I did not see this ago. at the uh, cinema either. I don't think I watched this until about three years after it was released because I was just that against it. And uh, I I was actually kind of down on my luck at the time. I didn't have any money, and I went to uh, I went to the library, and they had DVDs there you could check out. And I checked out a Nightmare on Elm Street because I thought, you know what, it's been three years. I love Freddy Krueger. Let me see what they did, and uh, they did. I did. They did. Now let's get it straight off the bat. I watched this film and thought to myself, you know what? There are some redeeming features to this film. I don't completely hate this film. I don't think it's the worst Freddy film of the entire franchise. Um, but yeah, it's it, it took a swing and completely missed on some really key elements. It most definitely did. And as much as I respect Jackie Earl Haley as an actor, I do. I think he's a phenomenal actor. Number one, I think that they completely miscalculated the backlash at replacing Freddie, uh, replacing Robert England, because Jason, Michael Myers, Leatherface, they they wear masks. Freddy Krueger has no mask. He is a person, and he is Robert England. And so to replace Robert England is no small deal. And not only that, not only they replace him, they made the face completely different. I would say they even softened the face and made the face a lot less threatening. Because to well, me, Jackie Earl Haley as Freddy Krueger looks like an old man. And I don't mean like a mean old man. I mean like a very soft, very non-threatening old man. Just they miscalculated. They miscalculated so bad. Well, one of the key things, and you're right, that's where they miscalculated. Their intentions on a, of some of these epic failures of this film are actually good intentions because I feel like they went into his makeup trying to ground it in a bit more reality and make him look like a burn victim. Yes. However, this is a demon who was burned. So the one thing about Robert England's character, yes, he had horrible burns, but you could almost see the elements of the demon underneath. And the other thing, the key thing, is when you put that makeup on him and flatten out his face, he has nothing to emote with. No. And Robert England is very facially an actor. He brought these expressions and controlled that makeup so well that you mute Jackie O'Haley. I don't think Jackie O'Haley is the problem. No, with no, this. I think most it's the way definitely not. Directed. And the other thing about his betrayal is they wanted, I think their influence was the original film, where we've got to say, Jason, Freddy was mean and sinister. We didn't get jokey Freddy. 
So I think they went in with that. Oh, well, let's make him dark and mean and sinister and we'll take Grim away the jokes gritty. because. But they miscalculated the audience because the audience has seen that version of Freddy once and seen the comical version of Freddy six other times. So, well, even, okay, actually, no, five other times because A New Nightmare, uh, that's a far more sinister Freddy as well. And even with the massive change in that, this thing looks awful. Yes. Another big miscalculation is the main actress, Rooney Mara. Playing Rooney, Mara, Rooney Mara apparently hated being in this movie so much, she almost quit acting. So it was not a good time for her either. She's a wonderfully talented actress. Mm-hmm. She's like top-tier actress. She's completely, completely miscast in this role. Um and that's a that's a really sad thing to to put out there, but it but it is. She she's absolutely horrendous. And some of the you can say what you will like about Heather Langerkamp. She was, um, far as I was concerned, not a great actress, but she did the innocence part really well. I don't feel that from Rooney, whatever. But who you just had up there, Kate Cassidy. I, I put up the wrong picture. There we go. Yes, I know. Yeah, um, yeah, that moment there. Got a Freddy in her tub. That's awful. That is an example of trying to do something shot for shot and completely missing the entire moment. I completely agree. Yeah. And um, I I will say, uh, sorry, I just I lost I lost my train of thought because I was looking at some notes here. Yeah, sure. Um, <laughs> um, <laughs> it happens to me all the time. They, I was watching some stuff. I was doing some research on uh, mm. this movie earlier. And it said that they used these photos of actual burn victims to, you know, do Freddy's makeup on. Of course, they did some green screen on the cheeks to make it look like the cheeks were hollow, which, you know, looked pretty good. They they said at one point that they had to pull back on the makeup because Freddy was getting too grotesque. And I got to thinking, why would they pull back? Because Freddy was getting too grotesque. That would have really saved this character because you could have shot Freddy Krueger in silhouette the entire time and never showed his face Hmm. and shown like little bits of it. And then you see Freddy at the end and he is grotesque and he's hard to look at. And they just they just completely just short circuited the character Hmm. by showing him from the very beginning, because my only thought of you're not Fred, you're not Robert. Who are you? Yeah. I think another thing they went in with good intentions and it completely was a miscalculation was making Freddie a child molester rather than a child killer. Ew. Ew. Okay. My yeah. thought on that. that here, here yes. Are my thoughts on that. Because I was actually just talking to a friend of mine about that. Mm. Freddie Krueger is one of those people that despite the fact that he is a murderer and he has killed children, he's still somebody you kind of root for. Because he does have just <laughs> this personality, and the movies are about him. I don't care what anybody says. Freddy's the protagonist of his movies. The kids are the antagonists. So you, you always rooted for Freddy. Off? Yeah, you always you always had Freddy's back in one way or the other. But you can't do that in this movie. You just can't because they. It's always been hinted that Freddy might be a pedophile, but in this one, it is like out there he's making jokes about it he's he's saying oh yes that dress was always my favorite when you were a little girl yes. and it's just you're just watching that just going ew ew i'm sure they went we're making freddie really dark and scary and there's nothing more disturbing than a child molester yes but exactly what you said is we root for freddie to kill these teenagers yes. And yeah. you, we can't root for a better file. We can't. No, we, we, no. You know, I mean, it's just absolutely. I, I, don't, I don't vote for them. I don't watch their movies. And I sure as hell am not going to root for one in a movie. That's just not happening. Exactly. Um, yeah. So you got to miss really failing there. Now, Kate Cassidy, to me, right? Kate Cassidy, who I despise, plays Tina, I believe, who I despise buys in the arrow tv series you ever watched the arrow series hated her in the show hated her wait a second who was she? oh no she, she was, was arrow's girlfriend was Dinah. yeah she was Dinah. uh yeah she was uh black canary 
Yeah, yeah Black and Arrow, which I hated in the series. The series I that I did enjoy. Season two being the best. Um, however, <laughs> here, it she's great in this. I really like, I don't know what it is about her character or the way she plays it, but I'm going, okay, saving grace. Except for that, that yeah, is another is. horrifically poor example. And every time they reference the, visual, the, the original film visually, they stuff it up, Jason. They do. They stuff it up with that. They, they stuff it up with the CGI Freddy oh coming out God, of the wall. Oh, my God, that looks so bad. It's like a $10 like, special effect. How did you even, yeah. It's like, hey, they did this for yeah, $10 back in the cotton. 80s. Yeah. Yeah, 10 back in the 80s looks better than this, I'm sure, $50,000 CGI special effect that honestly looks like something out of a Saturday morning cartoon. Yeah. FRI and, and what? Saturday morning cartoon. Shut up, I'm old. Don't you think you're watching this and you go, you know what, half the time I think they thought they were writing just a new Freddy movie. And then I feel like they were told, remember, it's a reboot. So we gotta we gotta kind of make we gotta, it. We gotta hit all the marks, guys. We gotta make his claws go overly sparking, by the way. Another just the little things like that. He does it and it's like fireworks, like someone's taped sparklers at the end of it. Yeah. Run his I fingers, have a rather than the old one was just, just a yeah, I have sparks. a feeling somebody just like in the special effects department just decided more sparks, more sparks. No, there, there was some good things about Fred. I liked how vicious he was. I liked mm-hmm. that he didn't just toy with these kids. He beat the crap out of them. And to me, that made him more that made him more of a threat. That I like some of the I camera stuff they did with him. Like they did those, you know, they stole the bit from uh, Fight Club with the background shaking, but he's still in focus and still in the middle. And I loved that. I, I like those little moments. Go on. Occasionally. But the rock video editing bugs me. And it made it look it so rock, yeah. dated. Even in 2010, even I guess 2013 when I watched it, I just thought, wow, this looks like it belongs 10 years ago because it well, looks like Fight Club. <laughs> yeah, it looks blah, blah, blah. just and every time they go into a, a dream, there's like the shaky transition. Uh yeah. and it to me it just betrayed the surprise they were in a dream. Yes, I will say that because the only thing diff- the only thing they could have added to that to make it so obvious is the actors going boo. Ooh, you know, doing the SNL kind of we're going to, <laughs> you know, the um, but yeah, it's 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 really bad in that sense. But there are things that I do like. I I, I think most of the young actors do what they can with it. it look, like Friday Thirteenth, two thousand nine, we get a better quality of actor in the film. We get more money. We get bigger budget. However, where I think this was worse than two thousand and nine is, as we've been talking about, the special effects budget where you gave them too much, where yeah. it should have been down and gritty. Because um, they were attempting to make a really gritty, grimy, psychological horror, and they visually try to get there from the way it's shot, but they just... I don't know what it is. It's a hybrid of things. I got really excited at one point, and that was when... Um, Kyle uh, Galner, who's a great actor, by the way, uh, his character Quentin is talking to Nancy, and um, he says he 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 makes the comment like, "We were kids. What did we know? We would have said anything they wanted us to say. They burned an innocent man." And yes. I thought, would that not have been such a cool twist on things mm-hmm. that? if the gardener was innocent and the parents never even bothered taking it to the authorities, they just instantaneously went and torched an innocent guy. And Freddy Krueger became this kind of an angel of vengeance, this kind man who just loved children coming back as a nightmare. I thought, would that not have been the greatest twist ever and really elevated this movie? And then nope, pedophile. No, and you know what? When you want to talk about how you're going, oh, he he's the protagonist in the films. What a great setup! Because his sequels, then, yeah. well, man, we're rooting for Freddy here. Yeah, I would have gladly rooted for Freddy. Yeah, I would have actually. This film would have gone actually probably would have gone up a couple of more points easily for me if that was the end of it. 
we found out he was an innocent man and had been, you know, unfairly. Um, what about the whole parents thing? I thought that was done well. I did like the flashback scene with Clancy Brown and uh, Connie Britton. Oh, uh, God, I, thought, I love the pair of them. Yeah, I I, I love Clancy Brown in anything. Mm. I don't think that man can. He, he elevated the, uh, the those terrible direct-to-video Starship Troopers movies. Uh, yeah, he, he was great. I really enjoyed that. I enjoyed the scene where, you know, uh, they, they, they burn Freddie in his, in his, uh, mm. in that abandoned building. I thought that was a really intense. Uh, well, it's probably one of the most not... horrific things. Yeah. And I love the scene where he's like ripping off his jacket cause it's on fire and you see the, the sweater underneath. I was like, that is such a cool scene. And then, you know. Pedophile. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Pedophile, pedophile, Freddy. And uh, yeah, like, I mean, I think once you once that's revealed early on in the film, that's what he is, it really does put a sour note on my whole thing. It really why, why I I I think they were really trying something here is because there are certain elements they tried to bring in to make it truly horrific. They just got it wrong. I mean, Robert Shea, who I probably blame the most for this because he has been the number one producer through every Freddy film, should have intervened at this point and known the franchise that he's been the steward of for almost 30 years now, if not more. Um, and he completely missed a boat with that because it, it feels like young director, got a point to prove, let's give him lots of Batman angles. And then we've got, you know, a bit of money behind it. But that isn't the recipe for success. And we get what I get. I think it visually looks great. I think if you'd added the humour in, got the makeup right, um, I think there was something here, Jason. I think there was something here. And definitely make him a child killer, an innocent child killer, like you said. I, I, even just just innocent you know um the i could i could see you know because one of the things they said was that they looked at the little girl's back and there were those claw marks on there mm. what if another kid like picked up a rake and like hit her with it and the gardener like said no don't do that don't i'm sorry it was an accident it was an accident go over there before you get in trouble and then you know that's where it came from mm. you know just i don't know i just the whole idea that freddie that the mortal freddy krueger was an innocent person and his death brought about this dream demon I thought was just very a captivating idea hmm. but that's just well me. It, you know they don't let me write movies no however you know the other problem with Jackie Hill Haley's Freddie is when he is the mortal alive Freddie playing with the kids doesn't come off sinister at all in those scenes. No, no, you're just like, comes off as a caring guy. Nice what a nice guy. Yeah, exactly. You know, do you know what? It would not surprise me if that was actually on the table in earlier drafts. Let's I, I'm very disappointed they didn't go that route because I really think it would have brought just this, this brand new. See, I like that the, sequence quite that, a lot. That was cool. Yeah. But, That's where you use your CGI appropriately. Yeah, those things. I will also say uh, I'm going to compliment this movie again. The whole idea of the micro naps, so that they're not even safe when they're awake, quite brilliant. I will add an that. extra layer to it. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Um, yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, yeah, but some of those young actors, Kyle Gorner, who you mentioned before, great young actor. Go watch Red State if you haven't seen that. It's a Kevin yes. Smith film people don't really ever talk about, but it's fantastic. Yeah, and he's and he's, he's he's grown up to have a terrific career too. And mm. he's he's one of those actors that just blends into every part and you don't even recognize him at times. No, and, but uh, he's important. Because obviously, of, obviously Rooney is not enjoying any moment she's in this film. No. At all. Oh, he, she's not. I'm also gonna I'm also gonna give it up to another actor that I really enjoy that uh, I wish was in more stuff, and that's Thomas. Oh, that's not him. Never mind. <laughs> Thomas Decker. I could have sworn I just Where are you, Thomas? There, Thomas Decker. Um he was uh he was fantastic in the Terminator TV show. And mm -hmm. uh, he's he's starting to he's starting to creep back in. We we saw him in Star Trek Picard's third season. So mm. uh, I, I like that he's coming back because I really always enjoyed him as an actor. Of course, uh, Keelan Lutz, I thought he was really good in this movie. That's who I clicked off. Of. Mm. Apparently, Keelan he, actually, Lutz. he actually stayed awake for three days before he filmed this scene. <laughs> and I'm just, 
It just reminds me of that uh, that old story with Sir Lawrence Olivier and Dustin Hoffman uh, filming the the scene in what was it Marathon Man with the with the dentist Marathon Man yeah yeah um, Dennis uh, not Dennis um, yeah forgot his name Sir Lawrence <laughs> you were talking about not Sir Lawrence Olivier the Dustin Hoffman Dustin Dustin What's Hoffman was blowing his lines during the scene and uh, Sir Lawrence Olivier dur- during a break said my dear boy what's wrong and Dustin Hoffman, I'm sorry, I stayed awake for like four days because I want to make sure I get the scene right. And Sir Lawrence Olivier looked at him and said, my dear boy, have you ever considered acting? <laughs> I was like, Keelan, have you, my dear boy, have you ever considered acting? Because he, he just looks like, I don't know, he looks like he smells really bad. <laughs> yeah. I did appreciate the, I, I, I like it was a change up in the beginning. Um, yes. Yeah. And that was yeah. a brutal, that was yeah. absolutely, because that was not like, that was not like the, eh, it was yeah. inside, just like, ah, you can see it's tricky. Yeah, jagged, just, yeah. yeah. What about the kills? We haven't spoken about the kills. What did you think of the kills in this film? The kills were fine. Uh, I really think they, they okay, so Dean's death was really cool. Mm-hmm. I think that Jesse's death, Thomas Decker's death, was kind of cartoony, to be honest, because it was just like explode through, and that looked kind of ridiculous, because that was more of a Jason Voorhees type kill. Mm. But it was the sadism afterwards where mm. he said, did you know that when you die, your brain stays active for six minutes? That's six more minutes we can play. I thought that was really good. Yeah. Because it's like, there's no saving you at that point. Yeah. Um, I'm yeah. trying to remember who else. Uh, yeah. Um, um, the Nancy, not Nancy. Um, Tina. Uh, the, Tina. Tina's death was. Every time it has anything where they're re- replicating a scene from the original, yeah, just horrible. Yeah, it just seemed like they couldn't even copy the scenes correctly. They just made bad copies of them. Because this is the thing you've got her on why, especially in the scene where she dies. What made it so horrific in the original was that she'd been slammed against, and she's crawling for her life. She's struggling. Yeah. She's grasping as she's spinning on the ceiling. Here. She's just getting thrown around like a rag doll. Yeah, and she's just planking the entire time. Um, yeah. I will say I did laugh out loud during Thomas Decker's character's death because that scene in the jail where the where his roommate just comes to the door going, I didn't do it! Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. All I could think of is, okay, so this is an innocent dude right here. Maybe he's going to be Freddy in the sequel. Maybe. Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. Let me write let me write movies, Hollywood. I can do better than this. <laughs> well, let's have a look at this film in the way of, it, it costs thirty five million dollars to produce. Right? So you had your marketing costs and all that. It probably clo- cost them close to seventy, eighty million dollars, maybe even a hundred million. Maybe. It gr- it made on the box office hundred and seventeen million. So it was profitable. But this is the era where critics were gods like and if the critics didn't like critics didn't like it they don't make any more and this thing got slain by reviews early on rightfully so in my opinion 14 percent it currently has its critic reviews on rotten tomatoes i think that's a bit unfairly low you know i mean like example madam webb has got a higher rating than that doesn't it or, that, okay, yeah, that is, that is definitely too low for a night. <laughs> yeah, you know what I mean? So I, I, think, I, don't, I think the I don't film like is a failure. Movie. Yeah, I don't like this movie, but it's not Madam Web bad. If you've seen Madam Web, I dare you to tell me that A Nightmare on Elm Street 2012, 2010 is worse than a Madam Web because I will look at you and I will laugh in your face because I know you're lying. I think it's a better movie than number six, Freddy's Dead. Yes. I, I, I think you're going to say it's better than number five. There you go. There you so go. It's not uh, the worst nightmare movie. No, not by a lot. No, not at all. Do you think it was a missed opportunity for them not to continue this franchise based on it? No. Yeah. Could they have retooled it? Because the next yeah. one you would have, they would have naturally kind of gone straight to Dream Warriors. I think they would yeah. have just skipped over number two and tried to remake that, which would have been a mistake again. It, it would have been. Um, I think that if there are going to be more Freddy movies, they need to go in a different direction. They need to stop trying to do their homages to other scenes 
They need to stop trying to reboot and redo characters, and they just need to do something different. Take a chance on something, because I think that is the thing about this movie that sank it was that it was so unwilling to try anything different. Everything old is old again. That's what this movie feels like. And that was probably the most offensive thing about that era when they did these reboots, Jason. And something I think Hollywood still haven't learned is the lack of respect for the audience's intelligence. Yes. Do you think if they had just made Friar, sorry, A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 8, recast Freddy, get someone who's a good actor but looks similar to, to Robert England, and just keep moving forward, the studio doesn't think the audience would have gone along with that. And I'm telling you right now, everyone would have been totally cool with it. Totally, yeah. we get it. He's in his mid sixties. He doesn't want to do it. Or again, I just think, why wouldn't you bring him back to do the soft reboot? Like, I just it, to me it doesn't make sense. Bring him back. Don't make it a have it a slash soft reboot sequel. You know what I mean? I mean, come up with an interesting story. Why not have Freddy got... try again to get himself reborn? He's reborn in a new body, and now he's he's back to you know. I don't know. I don't know. Just yeah, try something again. different. Having history repeat itself. Yes. He, he, those, you could even play off the end of Freddy's Dead by having demons. I would have accepted demons going into a new body and history repeating itself. Yeah, it's fine. Yeah. I, like, tie it together somehow because, um, yeah, yeah. So, in essence, not the worst Freddy film but a real disappointing end to the franchise as it currently stands. Very much so, yes. Mm. And that, and that's really it. And I don't know if this is stuck in uh, rights, you know, in lawyer's office somewhere, why, which I'm shocked that Hollywood or New Line hasn't tried to take another swing at it. Why, why do you think they, after nearly 15 or 14 years, that's gone, nah, we're not going to touch it again? I think it's mostly lack of studio confidence in franchise at this, as the, uh, franchises at this point. I think the mounting costs of special effects, because you need you need special effects to do a Freddy movie. And, of course, the backlash at the last time they tried to make another one. I, do, I don't think this will be the last Friday the 13th. No, I'm sorry. Uh, the last Nightmare on Elm Street movie. Uh, I do think they're going to try again. And uh, I just hope that it's going to be good and not just a rehash of stuff that we've seen before. I, I think the next time we see a uh, Nightmare on Elm Street movie, it's going to be a direct to, to streaming movie. That's my if point. we get, and you know how dirty I am, well, I don't know how dirty you are, but I'm pretty dirty on this whole Crystal Lake concept. <laughs> if they try to do something like that again, like detectives are on the hunt at a child killer at Springwood, and that's the series of them trying to, like, I'm not down for that. I know what he did. I know what happens to him. I don't need to see that again. Just get on with it. Move things forward. Yep. Um, really, honestly, Jason, there would have should have been no more Friday the Thirteenth films and Nightmare films after Freddy v Jason. No, nope. I think that was it. It was that the was perfect. The, that was that was the the end. Either that, or they needed to do a direct sequel to that. <laughs> they needed to do a direct sequel to Friday to Freddy versus Jason. Because honestly, how do you top? Freddy versus Jason. You, don't. you could talk about the MCU as much as you want, but if they had done that back then, that would have been pre MCU. Yes. It would have been bold because you're talking about then creating a horror universe. Yes. Which I'm sure in one way they wanted to do because the Universal Monsters back in the day had that as a shared universe. Um, not the Dark Universe. I <laughs> came out with one film, The Mummy. <laughs> Oh, what a shame. No, I was keen to see Johnny Depp play the Invisible Man and they had cast a lot of cool people, but yeah, it never happened. So that's it, Jace. We have ended. We have finally can say the Freddy and Jason, uh, well, series of films we have now completed. We ain't doing any more on this. Well, there are no more. There are no more. There are no more. But there's Freddy's Nightmares and there's the Friday the 13th TV show from the mm. 80s. Which might be fun to revisit one day, but absolutely, day. absolutely. Well, let's. I like to keep the ball rolling in some way, and we have announced this, and we'll re-announce it again. We're going to kind of wring every last drop out of the connectivity between Freddy versus Jason, as we now 
our next horror series we're looking at is Evil Dead, and I do believe that was a recommendation. Yes, it was. So we'll be going through every Evil Dead film all the way up to Evil Dead Rise, which was last year or the year before, I believe. So, um, yeah, very exciting stuff. Not, we'll start quite with... many, not quite as many movies as Nightmare or Friday the 13th, but... Mm. I love and it. just like the Friday series and the and the Freddy series, we're going to stick to the films only. We do know there is Ash versus Evil Dead series, and one day we will talk about that. I'm a fan of that show. Well, what's the first I've season? I've actually never seen it. It's actually pretty great. I know. It's actually You'll pretty good. Um, and maybe that's a, it's a way for, for to flip things for a change. I'll get you to watch that for the first time. Either way, we'll be starting off with uh, Evil Dead in a couple of weeks. But before then, Jason... Our next uh, movie we're reviewing on the VHS file, I do believe, is a recommendation. Yes, um, this and comes that from is from uh, James Gibbons from our Patreon page. Our oh good friend James God. Gibbon. Look at that beautiful thing! Oh. Cannot wait to have a look at this again. Attention, Starfighter! The Kazon Armada is coming. The Kazon was it? The Kazon Armada? Mm. Voyager stole that. They did. I just now realize that. Yeah. Um, Now, this film is an example, before we go, about Hollywood not paying attention to the audience. This is a reboot we do want. About actually making something we want to go and see, like a sequel or something to this amazing film, or my memory of this amazing film. But we'll be talking about that next on the VHS Vault, Jason. And until then, guys, stay real, and we will see you... uh, Next episode. Next episode out there somewhere in space.